Mulan for $30? Disney makes a big premium on-demand bet. I don't think it's a bet. I think they've got a good at least $300 million coming on this, possibly $400 million. I know the numbers. I'm going to show you the numbers in this Hollywood Reporter article and tell you where I'm getting mine from. All right, before we get into it, if you want to support my work, subscribe to the channel. It's a huge help to me. Click the bell for notifications and always leave comments below. And you can check out my work at collegeofthedead.com. It's a College of the Dead graduation day. It's an ongoing zombie apocalypse series. It's really cool. It's really well done. And there will be more episodes coming soon. And you can sign up at epicmermaids.com to get on the mailing list for The Mermaids. It's a Game of Thrones style mermaids epic fantasy. It's actually very cool. All right. Back to the article. So we're going to look at a couple of articles. The main one is The Hollywood Reporter. Check this out. I'm going to cut right to the chase and tell you where I'm getting my numbers from. This is not uh, advice to buy Disney stock. But you might want to buy some Disney stock after this. But, but maybe don't. But yeah, check this out. A Hollywood Reporter morning consult poll conducted between August 6th and August 10th indicates there's demand for, for Mulan. After Disney said Mulan was headed to the streamer, Disney Plus, interest in seeing it among a nationally representative sample of 2,200 adults shot up by 11 percentage points compared with early June. So just the concept that it was now going to be a blockbuster streaming event. You know, we used to have just like these tentpole blockbuster movies, but this is a new category. This is a blockbuster movie through a streaming event. This is something there's going to be a lot of hype for going into the movie on September 4th. Um, so I'm, I'm just impressed from a marketing standpoint. So um, now about 19% of the 60 million Disney subscribers, well, 19% of the Disney Plus subscribers from the poll said they'd be very interested in purchasing Mulan. Is that 19% of the whole 60 million? No, they didn't ask all, all 60 million. But 19% of the ones they did ask said they'd be very interested in purchasing Mulan. That's probably an 80% success rate of having transactions and another 23% saying they'd be, quote, somewhat interested. When there's momentum and more enthusiasm behind it, just like when there are these um, 11 percentage point increases from er compared to early June about people wanting to see Mulan, and it's gonna be talked about overall, all over social media, and it's now a unique uh, distribution channel. It's through Disney+, Plus, but paid through Disney+. Plus. Believe it or not, it makes it more exciting that it's a unique dedicated distribution channel like that. So if you take a, at that 19, roughly 20% of people that said they'd be very interested and cut that by, you know, whatever, cut that by 20%. So of those 20%, 80% of that, say 15, 16% of their audience go for it. Then another 23% saying somewhat interested, cut that in even more than half. So what are you, what are you doing? You're taking 15% saying very interested, another uh, 10% somewhat interested, that's 25%. If they pull 25% of the 60 million subscriber base, that's 15 million people at 30 bucks a head, which what that's, what that's the price of like coffee and a pack of cigarettes or coffee and a sandwich or something like that. It's not a lot of money. So that's $450 million. Trolls did $100 million. So if Trolls did $100 million, without all the marketing muscle and the installed base of 60 million subscribers who are looking at Disney Plus and are like, oh, what's on Disney Plus? What's on Disney Plus? You know, it's different than offering it through other channels, like offering it through iTunes for sale, offering it through Amazon for sale. How is it different? Well, it's different because for one thing, Disney has to pay them a 20% usage fee for because they're making money for putting it through their uh, retail platform. But the other issue is it's not going to be presented as a special thing for the network the same way. It may be promoted. It may be like featured at the top of their category or whatever, but it's not branded to the retail platform. So it's not quite as exciting. I mean, Disney Plus's new Disney release is Mulan and you can get it only on Disney Plus. It's a lot of momentum behind it. I'm not personally super excited for Mulan, but I, I'm interested 
and how they're leveraging their distribution and their business model. I think it's fascinating. I think we could all learn a lot of lessons from it. Let me get into the article. With a U.S. theatrical release ruled out because of the huge health event, obviously, the studio gambles with a September 4th debut on Disney Plus for the $200 million tentpole Mulan. When Disney removed Mulan from the release calendar in late July, the company tacitly acknowledged it was hard to pin down a date when Americans would be able to return to theaters. That, of course, that decision set the stage for an even more dramatic move from Disney, which August 4th said it would release the live action remake on Disney Plus exclusively beginning on September 4th. It's not exclusively, actually, in other countries where they don't have Disney Plus uh, distributed yet, and there are plenty. Uh, they will offer them to theaters with that limited distribution. Disney's plan to sell Mulan for $29.99 to the streamer's customers in the U.S. and other select countries that make the film, uh, whose big screen release was uh, thrice delayed, delayed three times, because of the novel, well, you know, because of the big health event, and widespread cinema closures, the centerpiece of the premium video on demand revolution. Okay. Like Universal, which signed an unprecedented pact with AMC Theaters on July 28th to create a 17-day PVOD window, Disney is experimenting with top-tier pricing for home viewing uh, as the health event continues. So the 17-day PVOD window is this. PVOD, first, first of all, stands for Premium Video On Demand. Premium Video On Demand is a video demand offering that is available while the movie is still in theaters. That's what PVOD means. The 17-day window is a deal that AMC Theaters made with Universal, just th those two entities exclusively, because they were fighting over Trolls, uh, the Trolls 2 movie. So they made a deal where uh, AMC said, hey, we'll wait at least 17 days with a minimum of three weekends comprising of those 17 days before they'll offer anything uh, direct to consumer through a retail platform. So... And they also made some revenue sharing agreement on, on, the, on that deal. So that actually an AMC theaters desperately needs revenue if um, Universal does that, if they offer it through their own PVOD um, channels, they'll kick some money back to AMC theaters. Normally it's at least a 30 day window, if not like 60 or 90 days. Um, so PVOD is, cl is clearly here to say, uh, sums up Screen Engine ASI CEO, Kevin Getz, yes, he's right. Um, the health event is not responsible for PVOD's success. It is it accelerated. It's it's enormously responsible for P, for PVOD's success. Why? Because the all of the extra cash, all of the extra cash money, right over here, this cash money that Disney is going to make, and they may do a billion PVOD with keeping eighty percent of it. Normally, they keep fifty percent with a the movie theater. There are different amounts for different weekends and periods of time. But the billion or whatever they're gonna collect, maybe 300 million, could be a billion, could be more, is going to be at the expense of the core of the theatrical distribution model because theaters can't show it right now. So what are you gonna do? So the, the timing is incredibly good. This is taking lemons and turning them into lemonade. Privately, theater owners were crushed when Disney CEO Bob Chapek made the Mulan reveal during the company's fiscal third quarter call. The company's stock soared more than 10% uh, the day after the news, even though the conglomerate, Disney, had also disclosed a $4.7 billion loss during the period, $3.5 billion of which, by the way, was from the theme park division. Um, what's really amazing is uh, when Universal offered Troll direct Trolls 2 directly through um, PVOD and was, didn't release it through movie theaters, movie theaters went berserk and they said all kinds of negative stuff about Universal. In fact, AMC at the time even refused to show any Universal movies in the future. We will no longer do business with Universal. Jurassic Park even. Like, no movies from Universal in the future because Universal was so enthusiastic and excited at the time. Um, they bragged about it and they were like, we, this is the new revolution. The theaters were like, hey, 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 hold on a minute. So, but everyone is terrified of Disney in the film industry because first of all, they're Disney. Secondly, they represent 40% with their acquisition of Fox. It's, it's like 38% from 2019, 38%, including their new Fox studios division, um, of 
the theme uh, of the movie theater market in the U.S. So it's one thing to tell Universal, we refuse to show your movies as long as we have Disney. It's like, well, you, you know, so you, you can tell Universal to go take a hike. It's, it was like 13% of the market, which is still a, a big chunk, but it ain't no 38, 40%. We now have a bit of chaos in the exhibition industry because of the move Disney just made, said Wall Street analyst Eric Handler of MKM Partners. The studio for many years has been the biggest supporter of the theatrical window, and now they are in a big tentfold film, and they are going Disney+. Plus. That's right. While Chapek, the CEO of Disney, uh, told investors Mulan is a one-off, he also said, he, he, he also said, it's a prime opportunity to test the appetite for PVOD, Sending the Nick, Nicky Caro-directed film to the living room might have less to do with turning a profit on the $200 million temple than with Disney's laser focus on growing Disney+, Plus, which has attracted more than 60 million subscribers in just nine months. But as a far less robust originals, uh, Candace, okay. Then, yeah, they don't, Cadence, they don't have um, a lot of originals lined up for Disney+, Plus, but they are lining up a ton of subs. So what a great opportunity for them to aggressively and maniacally release like one major tentpole $200 million film per month. I would expect that's coming very, very soon, especially if they have a big immediate success with Mulan where they can just tell people, look, hey, industry, we're sorry. You know, as soon as you open up again, let us know. We'll show our movies there. But in the meantime, we got movies we got to put out experimenting with but so far Mulan is the only one they've officially said they're doing and they're doing it September 4th experimenting with PVOD makes sense for Disney as it seeks to grow its streaming business says Roseblatt Securities analyst Bernie McTernan adding that they wouldn't be able to pull this off if it wasn't for the big health event and Bernie is completely right because they're doing this all at the expense of the theaters I, I, I feel badly for the movie theaters but honestly it is what it is and it's great that they can turn something bad into something good since the health event forced all U.S. theaters to close mid-March, about 14 films that would have otherwise received a traditional theatrical run have gone straight to PVOD, according to Screen Engine. Unlike box office grosses, PVOD earnings aren't reported. The Universal has revealed that Trolls World Tour earned $100 million in rentals in the sequel's first weeks of play in the U.S., and that was at 20 bucks a head. So far, the cost of renting new titles, including Trolls World Tour... Universal's King of Staten Island and Warner Brothers Scoob has been at 20 bucks for 48 hours. Mulan is charging $10 more, but Mulan is giving uh, subscribers access uh, permanently uh, to Mulan and their uh, subscribers as long as they stay subscribed to Disney+. Plus, Which is a good reason to stay subscribed to Disney+. Plus. You don't want to lose all your movies, do you? Light, they are. Can you believe it? Light, sh <laughs> it's, it's sharp. It's very sharp. Lightshed media analyst Green, Rich Greenfield questions how many people will shell out a premium to watch Mulan upon release, especially since the film, which has a PG-13 rating, skews older than us other Disney titles. So it might not appear uh, to appeal to families with young kids. A THR... Okay, so this is the poll I talked about in the beginning. 19% of Disney, sub, subscri Disney Plus subscribers surveyed in the poll said they'd be very interested in purchasing Mulan. This is without a lot of hype, publicity, momentum, social media energy. They're going to... Every time people look at Disney Plus, they're going to be like, oh, people are talking about Mulan. Now maybe I should buy it. Oh, people are talking about Mulan. Maybe I should buy it. Kids are going to be like, I heard Mulan is good. Let's check it out. Like, all right, all right, all right. Just to shut up a kid for 30 bucks that's going to appear later on your bill. And then you like you always have it, which is good because the kids like to watch movies like perpetually. So they'll watch a movie like a thousand times, which is fine. Of course it's worth it to buy it. I wouldn't be surprised if over time they do at least 60% of their um, subscriber base of Disney+. Plus buys Mulan at the full 30 bucks. The only thing that would prevent that from happening is if they decide to drop the price from 30 bucks to something less. One benefit to offering, to debuting the film on Disney Plus's platform is that Disney can bypass marketplaces like iTunes and Amazon Prime, as we said, and keep more of the profits. While the home entertainment revenue split is all, always more generous than the box office one, studios rely on digital retailers. Um, yeah, when you, when you go PVOD, you've got to give them about 20%. Figuring out how Mulan needs to perform on PVOD to break even is a complicated calculation given a, a number of factors. 
including the fact that the film will play in some markets on the big screen, including China. Um, Greenfield suggests that Mulan, if it were only a global PVOD release on Disney+, Plus, would need to sell 29 units to equal a billion in global uh, box office grosses. Well, that excludes the theatrical run revenue. That excludes uh, utilization of it in cable and other markets and other things like licensing. Um, and additionally, it's not accounting. Like, a billion dollars is great. Their break even is not a billion dollars. It, it, it isn't. They're calling it a $200 million movie. I don't know if they're including marketing. Let's assume they're not. But the cost of marketing is going to be a lot less than it otherwise would have been because of how it's being distributed. That There's a limited amount of advertising they're going to have to do and are going to bother to do to do it. And, and the kind of advertising they can do is advertising where it's almost direct response advertising rather than just mass media advertising. So direct response advertising is when you place an ad and you're expecting someone to immediately instigate a transaction. So they can utilize, um, brilliantly utilize, too bad they don't have, um, what's his name, Kevin Nyer there anymore who launched Disney Plus because the guy was amazing. Uh, but they can do all sorts of advertising and focus on direct response advertising to get people signing up to Disney Plus, to get people uh, agreeing to buy uh, the $30 Mulan rental. Um, it, it, it's incredibly uh, powerful. This is brilliant marketing stuff. There's a lot you can learn. Whatever business or industry you're in, a lot of my uh, people who watch my YouTube videos are interested in comics. I publish my own comics, so I'm very interested in this marketing stuff. And, and conceptualizing distribution and how you can spend, look at what they're doing. They're building their subscriber base for Disney Plus by drawing people to their platform just by releasing this successfully on their existing platform because they have enough momentum and success on their platform. The Disney Plus subscriptions are $6.95 uh, per month. So how many new subscribers are they gonna get? who are going to say, be like, oh, I want to subscribe to see Mulan. Well, you know, $6.95 plus per month, plus the $30 subscriber. I mean, if they get another million subscribers because people are out looking for Mulan, um, you know, that's $7 million just for one month in, of revenue. If they retain those guys for a year, I think about the average is approximately a year for what Netflix retains people. I don't know. A lot of people retain it longer. Some people leave sooner. But look at that. $80, $84 in revenue, plus the $30 uh, for Mulan, plus additional, there's additional value to the distribution channel now because now it's not just a monthly um, streaming subscriber, now it's also a PVOD platform. So they have a secondary revenue source on it. And this is fantastic. We need to do something exactly like this right away. A little difficult, but we'll, we'll get there one, one step at a time. Um, Handler points out that there's been no backlash to Disney's announcement as there was, uh, as Universal had in backlash for Trolls. Uh, but movie exhibitors, movie theater owners, you have, they have to be worried that this is a trial balloon. It's more than a trial balloon. This is a brand new platform that once, if they, if the only way they could screw this up is if they only do Mulan and they don't also bring in Black Widow the following month, if they don't bring in other titles, then it won't evolve as a viable platform. They have every reason and right to make this its own uh, PVOD distribution special blockbuster platform on top of the subscription service. They have every reason in the world to do it with all the movie theaters being closed right now. They're never going to have another opportunity uh, where the timing would be this ideal ever again. And they certainly need the revenue. And this should blow their stock price up, though, again... I don't do these videos um, to make stock price recommendations. We don't even go into numbers really much here. So be always be cautious about that. Um, there are, is another side to this. Uh, Disney is still technically losing money. And I'm going to put this um, link to this article uh, below. Uh, this shows the money that they're losing uh, through their direct-to-consumer division, through their streaming. And uh, in the last quarter, it was $706 million. Uh, prior to that, $812 million. But if they do this POV, PVOD, it's going to turn around. Keep in mind, you know, launching something like this, all the technology, the marketing, the promotion, uh, the original programming and things like that, it's expected that it's going to initially lose a little bit of money. But um, they have a real potential 
to turn things around. Netflix also lost money for years. Netflix is still losing money on a cash flow basis, but earning money on a net income basis. And the difference is how many years they account for the content that they buy. And they say, okay, well, after, you know, we, we buy this content, we, what do they spend? 14 billion in, in 2019, 14.6 billion on content in 2019, up from 9 billion in 2017. They're spending a fortune uh, on content. So what they'll do is they'll say, well, we spent 14.6 billion in content and we had less than that in revenue. So that's a cash flow loss, meaning more money spent than money came in. However, we're going to own that content and we're going to own it for a certain amount of time. So we have to spread the cost over a number of years as we're growing. You know, they're hustling and that's fine. Um, but, but Disney has an incredible advantage um they they really just do and um the, this worked out for them you know the, the whole health event really worked out for them with launching um disney plus and their first i'm sure of many of these pvod uh 30 rental offerings give me what you think in the comments below let me know what you think uh, and let me know. Are you going to watch uh, Mulan? I don't, I don't plan on it, but maybe they'll suck me in. I don't, it depends how exciting it is. And if it's exciting and everybody's talking about it, i got to sign up for it. We'll see. Subscribe to the channel. That's free. Click the bell for notifications. That won't cost you 30 bucks either. Um, what will cost a little bit of money is if you want to get my College of Dead graphic novel, that would be fantastic. I think you'll really like the story. It's really well written. The art is fantastic. And uh, it's the second and ongoing series. You can also get the first one if you want to know everything that's going on uh, in the series. It's very cool. And also sign up for epicmermaids.com. Sign up there. It's free. You'll get an email when the book launches. Look how beautiful the artwork is. The story is fantastic. It's an, it's really an epic mermaid fantasy. It's like if Game of Thrones uh, with all of the royalty and the cool um, intrigue and stuff like that, but also action, uh, you know, we're done as mermaids. Very, very cool. I think you'll really like it. All right, I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.